Welcome to the Porn Reboot Podcast, where you get practical tips to gaining control over your porn or sex addiction. We help ambitious men end their out-of-control sexual behavior with pornography, sex, and masturbation so that you can maximize your life, perform at your potential, and remain in control in the driver's seat, which is where you have to be in order to gain or maintain the success you want in life. I'm your host, JK Amazi, Certified Sex and Porn Addiction Recovery Coach. Welcome to the episode. Today we're going to talk about choosing the right mentors. Now, I'm a big fan of mentorship. A lot of you guys know that. I truly don't believe I would be where I am in most areas of my life if I did not seek the help of individuals who had walked that path before me. And I've learned quite a few lessons on the way. Some of them have been expensive ones in the tune of tens of thousands of dollars. Some of them just wasted a lot of time. And some of them, I ended up making decisions that hurt me emotionally. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to share some of these lessons in the hope that in this world of information and the internet and gurus and everyone being a quote unquote expert on different topics, that you can navigate this minefield, you know, a little bit better. One of the things that coronavirus COVID-19 did is that it forced many people to start working from home. It forced a lot of people to become freelancers. And for those of you who are on social media, those of you who spend a significant amount of time online, you've probably noticed the proliferation of all sorts of ads from people either showing, professing or claiming rather to be able to show you how to make money from home or start a business or do this one thing or the other. And there's a lot of crap in there. There's a lot of legitimate stuff. There's a lot of mediocre stuff, but this is relevant to you because a lot of men who are ending the out of control behavior are simultaneously looking to work on other aspects of their life, especially those aspects that atrophied or never got the chance to fully develop because your porn addiction basically robbed you of those years, of those experiences, and of those skills. My story is that I looked up to older, highly successful men as mentors, right? I tried to approach these guys and learn from them and kind of figure out their blueprint, like what were the things that they did which made them successful either in their relationships There were some guys who had just amazing physiques and were older guys. And I was like, man, how did this guy maintain this all the way to his like 50s or 60s? And he seems to be in like a really happy relationship. There were a handful of guys who were really great at dating. They dated beautiful women, figured it all out. And of course, there were the guys who were dealing with compulsive behaviors and they'd learned how to overcome them. My barometer back then was basically these men's material success. I didn't know any better. You know, I was very easily fooled by flashy things like, oh yeah, this guy has millions in the bank and he has a perfect marriage and he helps people do this and do that. And bear in mind, I was in my 20s, very impressionable. But these days, there's some people who are really good at marketing out there and, you know, they can make a huge impression on men who are in their 30s, their 40s and their 50s as well. What has changed over the years is now I take advice from men based on their happiness and their lifestyle, not necessarily their material success, right? Of course, they have to prove to me that they actually understand their subject matter. And not only that, that they are talented enough or they are skilled enough to help me get from one point to the other, right? So they understand that I'm going to be the best expert at myself, but they can identify the roadblocks and obstacles that are in my way, just as I do with my own clients, and move these things out of the way. One of the mistakes that I made, and I hope that my brothers who are listening to this podcast do not make, is either looking for mentors who are way older than you, like they're too far ahead of you to actually relate to you, or looking to mentors who are much younger than you or who are your age, especially if you are in your 20s, who seem to have a higher level of skill or a certain amount of expertise in a certain area. Now, there are pros and cons to this. For the older men who you are looking up to, 
One of the pitfalls of following their advice is that it takes quite a while to get the full story. There's a lot of stuff that might have happened in their 20s or their 30s that they just have removed from history. Like they might make things sound like, oh yeah, I was a self-made man. I overcame this behavior on my own. You know, I did this on my own and I figured it out and there was this motivation. And the truth is that there's really nothing like a self-made man. Everybody was helped. I got a ton of help getting to where I am today. There's no way I could have done it on my own. The self-belief was mine. The drive was mine. But the path? Oh, I didn't know where the hell I was going. <laughs> I had the ideal. I had the destination. But I didn't know where I was going. I needed to have people who had walked that path say, hey, 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 stop going off the path. Just come, come back here. Yeah, I know. I know it looks better there. But come back here. Trust me. And here's why. But with the guys who are so far ahead, because you don't know what they did when they were your age, and that was like maybe decades ago, you're just going to take whatever advice they give you. You can't really relate to a lot of the things that they're saying, right? On the other hand, when you listen to men who are younger than you, there's a lot of stuff that you actually cannot relate to, but you're forcing yourself to relate to it for one reason or the other. An example is when I was in my mid-20s, I was not qualified. Like when I was 23, 24, when I was going out there and meeting women and when I got into my first serious relationship, rather my only serious relationship, <laughs> when I was at that stage, I was not qualified to give men advice on relationships. I really wasn't. I could give some decent advice by the end of my second year of going out and meeting women. I could give some decent advice on meeting women and hooking up, that sort of thing. But to tell a man what he should do in his relationship, I had no business doing that. But now there are a ton of people with podcasts and YouTube videos and all sorts of media who are young men who are 22, 23, 24, who might be very good at hooking up. Of course, it's very easy to ignore some of the obvious advantages that some of these individuals have. Some of these guys are well-built. Some of them are quite good looking. Some of them come from really great backgrounds and they have all these advantages working for them. Yeah, and they also have skill. It does require skill. However, they start giving advice and claiming expertise in areas that really they have no business doing so. They're just doing it because men will listen to them and in many cases give them money for that. If you are a man who's 37 years old or who is 39 years old or who is 49, who's 50, and you are taking advice on your relationship from a 23, 24, 25, 26 year old, you're screwing up. I had to kick a guy out from our group the other day, a couple of weeks ago, actually, because he came in sharing some link from YouTube on some kid who had a pretty you know, popular following. And he was like, I highly recommend that you listen to this young man. He seems wise beyond his years. And I'm looking at the profile, the little profile picture of this guy posting, and he definitely has you know, he's, he looks like he's got like a silver beard and I click on it. I'm like, this is a grown ass grandpa, right? This dude, <laughs> this dude is a grandpa and he's recommending this guy's YouTube channel. Again, nothing like people can watch whatever they want to watch. My point is this was specifically about success and relationships and staying off pornography for the long term. Yo, if you're a dude who's in his 50s and in his 60s, right? What is it that a kid, literally, because that's what I was, that's where I was as well. What is a kid going to tell you about that? Now, if you're trying to learn how to hook up, right? Sure, maybe he can teach you that. If you're trying to learn how to work out, yeah, he can teach you that. If you're trying to learn a specific skill set that he has, yeah. But there are certain things that only age and experience can bring. And you want to be able to be discerning about those things. A lot of men don't do that. If it's flashy, they follow the advice. And some of you are probably going to still keep doing that. That's absolutely fine. Understand that a lot of younger men have not really been slapped around by life. Some of them have. There are exceptions to the rule. But, you know, getting married, 
going through a divorce, losing a close loved one due to old age, losing a business, going through bankruptcy. A lot of them have not experienced these things, and they are purely going off that enthusiasm of youth. When you think that, remember, those of you who are over 30, remember how you were when you were in your early 20s, sometimes even in your mid 20s, you thought you were going to live forever. I remember it like it was yesterday. Like I literally felt invincible. I was like, I can do all kinds of crazy shit. I could take all sorts of risks. And many of us are riding off the wave of enthusiasm of younger, quote unquote, mentors who don't have much experience because within us, we feel like we missed out on those things. But there's no one to just point it out to you. So please be, you know, be aware of that. When I started coaching men who were older and more successful, and this was in my late 20s, probably when I was about 27, 28, 29, by that time, I'd already built multiple six-figure sales organization. I had experience coaching people, working with people. I had sat down one-on-one -on -one with literally thousands of people. I had started coaching on the side, but there were still areas that I was not really mature in. But the reason I'm sharing this is because I asked some of these men that in their areas of expertise, would they give their younger selves any advice? And here's the interesting thing I learned from them. They said, no, they would not take advice from their older selves now. And I was like, why? They're like, well, because my younger self just didn't know any better. My younger self only wanted to have sex. My younger self didn't, wouldn't listen to me when I talked to him about saving money, right? Like, why would he save money when he had a chance to go to the club or he had a chance to take this girl out on a date or he had a chance to buy this nice outfit that he'd been waiting on for years? He's like, I just, I wouldn't do it. My younger self would not do it. So think about it. If they would not give advice to their younger selves because they know their younger selves were just too young and immature to take that advice, why would you take advice from them, right? So in my opinion, gentlemen, I found through my experience that it is best to get advice from someone who is a couple of years within your age range. When I say a couple of years, I mean a couple of years older or a few years younger. I do not recommend getting advice, especially when it comes to things like business, when it comes to addiction recovery, when it comes to long-term committed relationships when it comes to sexual dysfunction, I do not recommend getting it from anybody who's in their mid 20s below, or even in their 20s. The reason why is it's unlikely that they've been in a successful long-term relationship or multiple failed relationships. They're still at a stage where their testosterone levels are naturally high, right? Your testosterone levels begin declining at a certain age. So when you're in your 30s, yeah, the advice is going to be completely different. The way you feel about pornography, the way you feel about sex is going to be quite different. The same thing with business. Some kid who is doing really well because he runs an e-commerce store in his 20s, that's his first taste of success. Has he failed before? Has he lost everything before? And I'm not saying that that is a requirement, but has he had some scares? And what does he have to lose? Does he have kids that he's trying to put through school? So these are important things. I found that a man who is at least five to 10 years maximum older than you is going to be the best mentor for you or a few years younger because that individual is somebody who firstly, you can envision being where they are. Like you're like, yeah, this is achievable. I can accomplish this in a couple of years because I can see a part of me in them, whether it's in youth or it's in age, whatever it might be. Secondly, they clearly, this individual, especially those who are slightly older, they clearly remember being where you are. They really do. They remember being exactly where you were. It's not too far out. And they can tell you the exact mistakes you're making. They can tell you what they did. And you're like, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. That's relevant, right? And the final thing is you can detect bullshit better when a person is closer in age to you and they tell you something which is inaccurate or they exaggerate a little bit. 
you're better able to read them and you're not giving them as much of the benefit of the doubt as you would to somebody who was much older, right? There's just, there's so many years in between, but I found that you're just able, you're just like, you know what? This guy's full of crap. I can tell. I can tell when he's being straight with me and I can tell when he's exaggerating. You find that it's a lot more challenging to do when that person is much older than you or you hold that person, if they are younger than you, in really, really high esteem. You put them on too high a pedestal. So an example would be if you were 27 years old or 29 years old, you'd ideally want to be getting advice from somebody who was 36, 37, 38 years old, right? If you were 60 years old, ideally you want to be getting advice from somebody who is at least over 35 years old. Now, if you are in your 50s or in your 60s, ideally you want to be looking for somebody who has enough adult life experience. They've been through a long-term relationship. They could be in their mid-30s, but maybe they've never been married for a long time, or they've never been in a long-term relationship, right? Maybe they haven't had control of their compulsive behavior for over two years, and you've had control on and off for a couple of years. Maybe I was like, hey, I didn't watch porn for like four years. I was good. I had sex. I masturbated sometimes. And then suddenly I'm back to my compulsive behavior with pornography. And somebody comes along and they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I learned how to control my behavior for like, you know, the past two years I've been doing pretty good. And I'm, you know, I'm 33 years old right now. Uh, I don't know. Right. <laughs> Two years is not that long, right? It's it's great for controlling your behavior, but you know, you'd probably be more comfortable if they'd gotten at least five years under their belt, right? So these are important things to kind of look into. The reason why I wanted to share this is because, first of all, I'm seeing a lot of people sharing different links in different groups that we run. And I don't click on people's links. I don't have much interest in listening to other people. We're so busy on what we're doing right here. But from the little things I've seen, I've just seen young guys taking advice from guys who are older than their fathers. And again, nothing wrong with that. You can take some advice, but don't take everything from them. And I see older men taking advice from guys who are just way too young. And I want you to know that the exterior doesn't always match the interior. So just be advised. I'm JK, your brother in this struggle. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Porn Reboot Podcast. I'll speak to you later on in the week. If you found this episode helpful, here are four ways I can help you with your out of control sexual behavior for free. The first way is to grab a free copy of my book, Confessions of a Porn Addict, Seven Secrets of Porn Free Men at elevatedrecovery.org or visit the link in the description below this episode. The second way is if you're not sure where to start, but you'd like to learn more about my team and I, if you'd like to spend time with like-minded professionals and business owners who are controlling their behavior, then join our free and confidential group, The Porn Reboot Group on Facebook. There's a link to join in the description below this episode. The third way is if you need help right now because you have a burning issue, your behavior with pornography is hurting you mentally or emotionally, you're about to lose your relationship, you want to live up to your potential, be an authentic man and free yourself from shame, guilt and underachieving, then click on the link in the description below this episode that says free coaching call. And the fourth way is to leave us a five-star review if you enjoy this podcast so that we can reach more men who are struggling in silence and bring back the lessons we learn from coaching them to freedom.